came to Home Depot, get some quick color and also some uh, sunrise red. Decided I'd show you guys what's uh, what's in the snowblower department. I've said many times here in Long Island, they don't expect to get any more snow. You got this electric one corded, 110 bucks. Corded, I believe, 110 bucks. Over here you got one gas snowblower made by Troy Build. 150 bucks? Oh, that's the protection plan. A thousand bucks for a 24 inch. That's insanity. How expensive snowblowers are these days. Insane. Here's a uh, Toro power propel. Electric, battery operated, 60 volt, 1150. <laughs> Crazy. There's another one here, 750. Ooh, power of gas? <laughs> Get the hell out of here, power of gas. This is uh, 1200 bucks. Made by Ryobi. Dual stage LED light. 40 volt. 40 volts. 1200 bucks. What are you crazy? Anyway, this is it. That's the extent of the snowblower uh, department here at Home Depot. Crazy, right? $8.99 for that Ryobi all wheel drive. Thousand bucks for Makita. Five hundred for this one. Twenty-one inch, made by Makita. Electric. 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 Eight hundred. Seven hundred. Five hundred. Here you go. Uh, M eighteen Milwaukee fuel. Twelve hundred bucks. Four hundred for this one. Ryobi. Three sixty-nine. Dewalt. I don't know anybody with a Dewalt. We have one Murray um, gas powered. That's not bad. 329. No bag. That's it. That's the mowers here at Home Depot in Long Island. Got this quick color, gloss black. It was on sale. 230. It's usually like 238. <laughs> I'm just going to go over there. some rusty parts and some adhesive I don't want to scrape off. So. This will do. Don't even really have to mask it off too much because it's mostly air. That's why we like quick color because you can't really overspray it. Because it takes several coats just to get it right. Better already. Some rusty spots here. And this is a high used area, such as pulling it backwards, whatever.
right, right over the rust. No grinding or nothing, because I just don't care. But better than nothing. For two dollars and thirty cents. touch up fixed as a youtuber as you guys have seen in my videos sometimes I'm filming with my iPhone and then my battery runs out and so I got to go in inside and charge it you know it's very inconvenient sometimes I got a product that everybody needs not just a youtuber but everybody with a cell phone needs this item is from Blavor It's a portable battery charger for your cell phone. 10,000 milliamps, which is equivalent to 1,000 amps per hour. That's a lot of power in this little small brick. What's ingenious about this, it's magnetic. It works with all cell phones. Here's a uh, Samsung Galaxy uh, Edge 7. Mounts to your cell phone just like that through magnet. And it even has a little key ring here so that you can hold it.
Looks just like that. As you can see, it has a key ring here where you can hold it. And it's magnetized with this padding right over here. Over here, it comes out a USB-C cable. On the other side is your standard iPhone lightning connection. And if you have a micro USB type, you can plug in your cord right there. Also, it has a charging cable, USB-C, to charge up this device. You can have another cable, USB-C out to micro USB or whatever attachments you may have to charge. As you can see, it tells you green light is power on and also it is fully charged at four bars from Blaver. Also in the box is a USB-C to USB-C cable and a carrying case. So this is super convenient for everybody who needs an extra boost of battery whenever your cell phone runs out. With me, during filming, time is money. So if my battery runs out on my phone, I can't film anymore. But now, connect it magnetically and continue filming. I love it. It's a great thing to have. Plenty of punch in this little package here. 10,000 milliamps or 1,000 amps per hour. Pretty amazing. Magnetized so you can stick it anywhere on your phone and a key ring here to make sure that it doesn't fall off your hands. USB-C and lightning connections on the side. Also other options on the bottom with an indicator that tells you how much life this has left. If it's dead, charge it up with the USB-C cable into your USB. This is a battery booster charger from Blavor. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested. When you got as many machines as I do, in the wintertime here in Long Island, New York, you have to winterize all your equipment. I just remembered that I have two working lawn tractors in my shed that I just recently fixed, but I haven't listed it because nobody's gonna buy a lawn tractor now in the middle of winter. You know? So I'm just gonna casually go over to my shed and we're gonna winterize those two tractors. I've got a small container here and I'm just gonna try to drain the gas tanks and then run the engines until all the fuel in the carburetor is depleted. Then for next spring, when it gets warmer, it'll start right up without any problems of ethanol breaking down and clogging up your jets in your carburetor. Here we go. Here's my two-tone LT1000 that I just fixed. Got quite a lot of parts from my subscribers who helped me out. Recently just got this bezel from Roger McDonald. Thank you. Got this one from Aaron Dearborn. This cover is very useful. Also from Sam Rausch. Two people sent it to me. I don't know how I feel yet about my orange and red transition blend. It's unique for sure, but I don't know if it would appeal to everybody. So I think when it gets warmer in the spring next year, I'm gonna finish off that orange and just complete, completely uh, paint it red. Also, I'm gonna mask off this area too and fix that because I just masked this off and left it green because this is a lot of masking, a lot of work to do. But I think I'll do it anyway and paint it all red, make it look nice. I noticed when I was pointing out this uh, cover that a uh, subscriber donated that this is actually a fuel pump fuel system, meaning that you can't really drain the fuel because it's a pain in the balls. You got to go underneath the thing and pull the fuel um, hose off and drain the tank, and that's a pretty big tank. I think the best thing we have to do is just because the engine's not on, fuel is not going into the carburetor. So we're just gonna detach this fuel filter from this line so that no fuel is getting to the carburetor and just running out what's 
left in the carburetor there. Leave the gas in the gas tank with some stabilizer and this ought to be okay. This doesn't have a clamp on it, so we'll simply just remove this. Let that hang there. Let this hang here. And we'll just start it up and let it run. Let it run until all the fuel is drained from the carburetor in this engine. This is a V-twin. I haven't run it in a while, so <laughs> maybe it won't even start. Uh, before we get it all too smoky, let's go drain the gas out of that one. So this is my Toro um, 1438 HXL hydrostatic lawn tractor, but it doesn't have a 14 horsepower engine in it because it was blown when I got it. Actually, my friend Nick gave it to me with no engine. So I put this engine in. I got the engine in a block from my friend Mickey. And from the parts that I got from subscribers who sent it to me, I was able to put this engine together. And this thing runs great too. Checking out the gas in the gas tank. You got hardly any gas in there at all. And also, I had installed the fuel shutoff. So what we're going to do simply is just shut off the gas, right? So that no more further gas is going to go into the carburetor. This will evaporate by next year because we're only talking about a couple of drops there left anyway. I'll just leave this cap off and just let it evaporate, you know? Now we'll start this up and uh, let it burn out all the gas that's left in this segment of the fuel line going into the carburetor bowl. And this should be winterized. Uh, I'll probably start both of them up and let it just run until all the fuel is depleted. I sure hope both these things start. <laughs> I haven't run these in a while. Not sure about the battery. in a while there could be no gas left in the bowl I think that's it I think we're good on this let's try this one running right gas is going to continuously shoot out because of the fuel pump mm. that's right wait a minute let me just think for a second i don't know the fuel pump's over here okay no we're good the fuel pump's there i've disconnected it so no fuel is getting from the rear to the front it should be all right evaporated this usually starts up right away because it's a fuel pump no gas is automatically continuously flowing to the carburetor so if you leave it idle for a while the stuff will just evaporate and I parked this in here when it was still warm so I think we're okay yeah battery's gonna be dead anyway by next year I'm pretty sure I think we're good. Just connect this hose back on again, just so we don't have any accidents next year.
And we'll just call that done. I do want to get Rodimus Prime going again. It's been sitting here for like two years without it moving. Those are the, uh, that's my big monster 1333 snowblower. That's my other uh, 28 inch, eight or nine horsepower. I'm not sure, 11 horsepower, Aaron's. I have a Lithely 40 volt uh, review product that works great with powdered snow. I have one more Yard Machines single stage that, from what I remember, runs. I've got this Power Smart 24-inch uh, dual stage, 40, uh, I'm sorry, 80 volts snowblower. I'm going to use that this year, too. It's electric, 100%. It's worth like $1,000. As you guys know, Blue Bayou haven't, haven't used this for a year. Uh, maybe if we get enough snow this year, I'll whip it out. I have an engine that I could put on that uh, Power Smart with a bagger. Pretty cool. Got an extra V twin engine over here. The new cover, thanks to a subscriber. Got some good wheels here for a future tractor project. So that's what's in my shed. All ready for the next adventure. Oh, it's my time on, on Mowers and Blowers! blowers.